everybody. Oh, hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. I teach you how to tap into your inner creativity through um, skills and all the good things so that you can become confident as an artist. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how to create a base for a, um, a mixed media piece. So for example, this huge canvas was actually done on a collage. And so let's talk about how to do that. Give me one second to just switch the camera here so you can see everything I'm doing. Boom. Oh, boom, there it is. So I have here in front of me the Merry Wives of Windsor. It is an opera score that has all the words and the music. And oh my gosh, if you do mixed media, this kind of makes you excited. A girlfriend of mine, my bestie, she uh, said, well, you know, I'm not really singing anymore. So why don't you take these? So yeah, I'm kind of desecrating a book, but it was unloved and likely to get recycled. So why not do something using a... What are these things called? A rotary cutter. Okay, slice a few pages out, pick the best ones, check the sides. Oof, this one's kind of fancy. Look at all those like excessive notes. So then what you do to prep a page is you would go ahead and rip it. And what that does is it just creates a smoother transition. So as you tear the edges, it just adheres a little better to the page and then you keep going with that. So I've technically already done this so you don't have to watch me tear paper because that, you know, I'm not here to bore you. I'm here to entertain you. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to grab some Mod Podge or similar. I am testing out the Craft Smart decoupage stuff just for giggles. It's always good to have multiple sources in case you can't find a thing. So just using a big fat chip brush and mind you, if you, Use a brush you don't love. If you use your good brush, chances are you're going to ruin it because you can never get the stuff out that gets stuck way up in here. Um, and the quality of this brush is going to degrade over time. So I'm going to start with just kind of a base covering here. And let's see, I have these three pages. Oh, isn't that exciting? I find these pages really exciting. Okay. So, oh, that one's upside down. We will put him right side up right here. Just lay him down, kind of get him smoothed out. Where did I put it? I have a credit card somewhere. Well, there's my stack of credit cards. I'm going to pull out. Hopefully nothing with too much. <laughs> okay. I have got a boatload of these hotel cards from all of our ski trips because my son always leaves them in the pants of his ski pockets. No matter how many times I try to get the ski, the keys back and return them up front always in his pants pocket. So there you go. I don't steal them on purpose, but good stuff. Okay. So if you're here, go ahead and say hi. I'm going to do my best to figure out how to monitor the comments. You may need to click the, uh, let StreamYard see your info button link thing. That's probably in this. Hopefully it's in this so that I know it's you. Otherwise it just says Facebook user. So we're going to do the same thing a couple more times. And I'm really excited to have these these opera notes. So this one is this one the marriage of no Mary Wives of Windsor, but I got Cosi Fan Tutte, which is Mozart, and I actually saw that one live at the um, at the Kennedy Center many years ago. And the best part was is they modernized it for uh, DC, and so there was all these like local jokes that were just kind of hilarious. I mean, it really just kind of made my day, but. Regardless of being an opera fan, I actually really do love opera. <laughs> it's pretty phenomenal. Okay. All right, there we go. So regardless of that, I just think this looks so good. And there's just so many notes and so much stuff going on that it's like, it's perfect for a background, right? Because it's, it's busy like we like. At first I started, you know, with music notes, I was stealing my kids beginner piano pages and it had like, you know, three notes a line. And I was like, I mean, that's cool. But these opera scores, phenomenal. When Julia told me she was going to give me these, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm thinking it's like, you know, like playbooks or something or like, you know, opera, like, like the thing that has everybody's name of the program. And so when I open it, I'm like, holy moly. And they're like a vintage 1945 edition, something. I'm like, I'm not sure I can tear that one up, but still, 
kind of good stuff. So here we go, just getting this stuff down. And I, and I really love using these sort of old credit cards. So anytime you have a credit card expire, you know, maybe instead of cutting it up and throwing it away, stick it in your art stash. And then you can kind of use it to kind of smooth the wrinkles out because this stuff does get wrinkly. Now I could and often do coat over this with more Mod Podge just to kind of stick it down, but I think I'm just going to do the edges and more or less leave this center not Mod Podged, if that makes sense. Not whatever this stuff is decoupaged. Because, um, yeah, because it creates kind of a glossy, a glossy surface. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. We're going to be, let's just do it. So just a really light coat of it. it doesn't have to be too much. Just wet the edges there. Well, not wet, but goop the edges. Oh, I forgot a little rinse thing for this. So these are like super cheap chip brushes, right? Like I really love them, use them all the time. But if I end up having to throw one away after several uses of Mod Podge, I don't feel bad. Whereas if I had to throw out like one of my good happy favorite brushes, I would not be a happy camper. So, you know, it's all good stuff. And so I do a lot of these mixed media projects for my uh, Blue Cat Inner Circle uh sort of vip membership so we just finished doing this one or just finished filming it um i'll be loading it to the site for my members real soon okay so i'm done with mod podge maybe give it or the, whatever this stuff is called everyone calls it mod podge but i don't know what else to call it decoupage last scrape get last little bits of stuff off i need to put some water so i don't ruin it immediately oh well, that's the one thing I forgot today was having a good water thing. I'll just pour this in here. Half my half my brush rinse water. That'll do. I'm gonna give it a quick blast, and I'm also gonna just pour this goop back. It means it might get a little gross and gungy, but probably not, because I think that's my my yucky spot there. Put it up. All right. So that's step one. We'll blow this blow dry this sucker so I can move on to adding paint. And so. I'm not going to do the actual figure on this, but I'm, I've got this idea. Um, I'm working on a commission and I want to flesh it out, but I have to say, I want to do my own background just to test this other material because I'm planning on using some, um, modeling paste. If this thing turns out good, I'm going to show it off. If it doesn't turn out good, well, I'll probably be like, ha ha, look at my, look, look, I screwed up and I'll show it off anyways, right? Okay. So we start with, of course, the magic hot pink because I'm Wendy. And what else do we use? It, it, I'm the fluorescent fairy. I'm always doing fluorescence. I want a big fatty brush. Here's my biggest. Mm -hmm. Oof, that one looks nice. Okay, we'll go with this guy. So it is a number four round. Oh, hey, I need to put this right here, huh? A number four round. That's brand spanking new. Still has a little plastic protector on. And so I'm gonna have this thing kind of on here. I'm not gonna worry about the background per se, or the, you know, what's gonna be on the foreground per se. And so I'm just gonna start by kind of placing some color in here. And then I'm going to do some shapes and some bits. And, you know, this is our opportunity to kind of go abstract. There's really no rhyme or reason here, but I just kind of want to show you like how much fun you can have just getting outside your comfort zone and trying something new. And who cares if you mess up, right? Like this is my experimental piece. I have, I want it. And my, my goal really is to see, is to make sure that I'm really good with a modeling paste before I go like full bore on a six foot piece for this commission. Um, and so I'm going to do my own style background and this is just fun, right? And if it looks awful, well, as long as I can learn how to use the modeling paste or, you know, not just learn how, but really master the technique, then 
then it's a win. And if I screw up, then I, you know, scrape it off and keep going and paint over it or something. Or... That is the beauty of art. Okay, so I've, I've hot pink this thing quite a bit. I'll probably come back and hot pink it some more. Maybe a few of these sort of, what are those? Balls, bubbles, circle things. It's all good. Spider web hanging down. Really, my housekeeping skills are suffering a little. Sorry. All right, one more. No one said I had to be a good housekeeper to be a good artist. Thank goodness. Otherwise, I'd be failing miserably. Okay. So it is a big mishmash pink, and it's getting a little bit. It's getting a little bit patterny. It's fine. We'll just kind of add some bits in here. And what I'm loving about this is that you can still see the musical instruments or musical instrument the, the notes through it. Just gonna kind of take some color around some of the edges. So wherever I feel like I've kind of taken the pink to the edges and get it to go off the edges a bit too. All right, so that is a good start. Oh, right, don't break your rule, Wendy. Offload, offload on something useful. So break out the old prospectus and... And how's my drying status? Some of it's dry and some of this I have big chunks. So we're gonna give it a quick blow dry. Damn. Now I'm going to come in with mental change. I had this one idea, but now I'm changing my mind. I'm going to do some orange, of course, orange, because why else, you know, or what else? Here we go. Fluorescent orange. So we've got a bush and orange from Lucotex Basics, because I'll tell you in terms of thickness and workability, the Lucotex stuff is really phenomenal. So if you ever are looking to get a fluorescent red color, you really can just kind of paint fluorescent orange right over a fluorescent pink, and that is more or less what fluorescent red looks like. Ta-da! So again, we're just creating like a really colorful base here. My intention is to have kind of a fun pattern on this, so we'll come in and get some mermaid tail teal in here, of course, because that's like my other spirit color that sounds ridiculous but okay it's just like one of my favorites and it does cool things and so in some cases i'm painting around the pink and in some cases i'm painting right over it which gives some very very cool kind of transitional colors and when you have all this collage down like if you happen to um you know, miss a piece of, of your of your surface, it kind of doesn't matter because you've got all these musical notes or whatever it is that you've collaged down. You don't have to use musical notes and old, you know, opera scores. That's just like my latest acquisition. I, I grabbed a sort of an appetizer and cocktail last night with, with, with Julia and she was like, here. And so they came home with me last night. And so of course I was like, well, let me prep a bunch of canvases. I'm super excited. And then I was going to prep this one. I'm like, wait a minute, stop. You could totally do this one and show everybody what you're doing. And, you know, instead of keeping it like this crazy mystery, let's, let's show it off. Okay. We have got some serious orange, right? So very loud, very crazy. We're still just developing the background. And this is a pretty sizable canvas, right? I've got what, like a 10 by 20 or something. It's not small. It's not huge, but it's not small. Okay, I'm just coming in with some yellow, kind of filling in, Ooh, getting a little blendy blend every so often. Ba -ba. And so while oftentimes, you know, when we do art, especially if you're working on a raw base, that's not a prepped canvas, 
uh, we use gesso to kind of prime it and condition it. The beauty of the mixed media art is oftentimes we'll actually put gesso on top of paint instead of underneath it. I love how mixed media just takes everything and turns it on its head and kind of takes that upside down approach. I think it's a really fun way to go. All right, so. Bum, 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 bum. So for those of you who are in the inner circle, you've kind of seen this sort of technique before. I'm doing a, going a little bit more blotchy this time, trying to actually have some of the individual colors. Um, I'm also feeling a little inspired by um, this girl with bubbles in her hair that I did the other night. Because I think I want to have some articulated kind of bubble-like shapes on this as part of the background. And because the thing I'm going to do in the foreground is to be very simple. Oh, hey, Pat. Good to see you. Okay, so somebody said, hey, lady, but it says Facebook user, so I don't know who you are. Like here, again, I'm always in my own world, and I look up, and I'm like, oh, there's comments. Cool. How's it going? <laughs> so hello to whoever said, hey, lady. If you click the thing that says StreamYard, let StreamYard see who you are, and it will just tell me who you are. It doesn't really do anything else. I know it's sort of weird when somebody uses an app, but what this does is it allows me to stream um, to a little bit more consistently as Facebook's been doing some weird things recently and I've actually done lives and lost the stuff. And I'm like, I can't, that's, that's not okay. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, fine. I'm going to use my app just to make sure that I've got it. I'm going to record it on YouTube just in case that way, if we lose it, we can always come back and post the link so you guys can see it. All those things. All right. So loud, crazy, slightly obnoxious. We're good with that. We are good with that. Again, I'm going to go ahead and oh, offload into my handy dandy, trusty, friendly journal. And oh my gosh, speaking of these things, I'm super excited. The, this is the, uh, the elixir of love, the Donizetti. I think I've seen this one as well. And it's from 19, I think 45. I forget, but it's just like old and ugh. So one day when I run out of other journals, I'm going to do art directly in this one. I don't think I can bring myself to cut it up, but I do think that um, it'll be a really fun, a really fun uh, book to just continue to do projects in. It's a hardback. It's old, but nobody's really loving it and they probably changed it. I don't really know. Okay. Low dry this sucker. Here we go. Low dry it. But watching me break out the hair dryer every time is a little bit obnoxious, but at the same time, oh, it was a whole lot better than sitting there waiting for my paint to dry. But yeah, isn't that thing amazing for a journal? It makes me so excited. And the best part is a lot of the ones that she gave me are offers that I actually saw at the Kennedy Center and um, they just have fond memories of. So I'm like, oh. not that I could sing them because I have zero musical talent. So I just splooshed some gesso white stuff in case you're new to that. Sorry. So super mucked up bottle. I keep refilling it cause it's the perfect size to keep on hand versus like the major tub, but it's a liquid text. You can get the professional or the basics. Every time I try to get the basics, they don't have it. So I'm going to kind of keep going and do some more of those circles here. And the reason I'm doing that is, you know, some of this background is very bright. And so I just want to be able in some cases to put some darker colors over with a little less bleed through. I'm doing a series of kind of dots here. I think we'll kind of come in and then fill in with some just brush piece, whatever these are, brush blobs, brush spots. I'm like, 
What's the word? I guess I need some over here too. Boop, boop. And I do know that in certain places, parts of this are going to be completely covered up, and that's okay. That is perfectly okay. We try not to get too attached to anything that we do on this. And that is one of the other secrets to success when you're creating art is that the more attached you are to the outcome, sort of the less, um, I don't know, like the, you just put so much pressure on yourself when, when you're just like all about the outcome. But when you go to have fun and to play and you just kind of make and say, you know what, even if it's not perfect, it's going to turn out, it's going to turn out something and I'm going to learn something then it becomes like a really cool experience. And so I'm a huge, huge fan of, of trying to let go of the pressure. I mean, I feel like we have so much pressure in our lives, like with everything else we do with work, with relationships, with our kids, you know, just, if you're in school, there just, there's so many other places where we have pressure. It just doesn't seem, I don't know. I don't want art to also cause that for us. I know that it does. Um, and I'll tell you, I, my art really took off when I stopped worrying about being perfect and decided to experiment and play and mess around and see what would happen and be open to screwing up. In fact, there was a quote somewhere, and I feel like I've mentioned it before, and I, I just need to go look it up. But it's like, you can't be a good artist if you're not willing to be a crappy artist. To sum it up, basically. Um, and quite honestly, um, when I finally said, okay, you know what? I would love to be a good artist and I'm going to be willing to just see what happens and, you know, potentially do garbage. I would just try stuff. And I say, if I don't like it, I can flip the page and go do something else. Now today I'm committing to canvas with only a partial plan. All right. So I'm really just kind of putting shapes on here, right? And creating patterns and which is okay now because it's a background I just didn't want the other colors to be patterns or almost like herds of things like I got a herd of big dots and a herd of little dots and then a herd of accidental herringbone or fern leaf or I don't even know what that is it's it's lines that look like a thing maybe we'll add some lines here so my only goal for this is to have a really bright kind of crazy background that I can do a very simple gold figure on top of. And I think we got this, right? So you are welcome to join me. But the beauty of this is you don't have to use the colors I'm using, right? I mean, sure. I am the fluorescent fairy. I can't help myself. I just need fluorescents. They make me happy. But if that's not you, use something else. All right, let's go ahead and rinse, and you know what's coming next, right? I'm going to break out the hair tools again. So you may see me continuing to kind of move my, my palette out of the way. It's because I don't really need to blow dry my palette. So this little gap here, like at the end of my table, and I've had it like plop out and like land paint side down on my printer and then have to kind of clean it up, and then I'm just like sigh. <laughs> All right, here we go, let's do it. I think we're good with that one. All right. Okay. Here we go. So as I was doing this, I'm like, oh, we want to use mermaid tail teal because it's my favorite. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, but I bought this other one. So let's do a side by side comparison so we can see the difference. And I'm like, but I really want some of this cerulean blue because it's like, you know, electric. So we'll grab some cerulean and squeeze it onto my canvas or my whatever this is. Oops, paint boogers. Sorry. Okay, now let's do it. Comparison on these things. 
So this one is the folk art teal. And there's a French name for it too. That's like blue sarcel or something. Don't mind me and my very bad French accent. I cannot do French to save myself. So I, one thing, oh, that's kind of bubbly and strange, but one thing I really like about the folk art versus the deco art is it's much thicker. Like, I mean, that's practically a heavy body craft paint. Can you like see the difference there? It's like, well, it also glue bubbles, which is weird. But color wise, those are pretty similar. This one, the uh, folk art is a little bit bluer, but that is about as close as I've ever gotten to a mermaid tail teal. So I'm just gonna, well, I'm, since I stuck my finger in it, I'm gonna do a little finger painting. That was, oh, that's nice. All right. I guess I should wipe that off. We'll keep going. Let's use the brush. But it's still fine. All right. So we're gonna kind of just do, do the things. Yeah, and that's good coverage too. So, okay. So as much as I'm like crazy, crazy about the mermaid tail, if you cannot find it, you will be just as big a winner with the folk art, just plain teal. It's this beautiful deep color. And I always recommend it just because it mixes so gorgeously with everything. All right. So I'm going to do kind of a multi-layered approach here couple of the dots, not too many of them. But a little, a little kind of dance of, of these. Ah. Offload. And we'll go for some of the blue. I'm not going to rinse my brush because I think I can get away with not rinsing it. Oh, my stuff is casting shadows on my bottle. Oh, look at that blue. That is, see, that's the kind of electric I like. And my plan is to clean up some of these edges. Whether I would, may do it with like a paint pen, I'm not 100% sure. Again, I'm just kind of playing with ideas. I'm just trying to create a crazy fun background, you know, partially for my amusement, but also partially just to see what happens. And if this turns out to be a cool project, then we'll take this and turn it into, you know, we'll keep going with it and I'll, I'll do a tutorial on all the bits. Right, maybe more blue over here. That is really phenomenal color. And so if you're, you know, seeing some of these things that we're doing, you're like, oh my gosh, I really want to be, why did that ding? I don't know. And you're like, I really want to get access to all those tutorials and all like the, the private VIP access stuff. You know, let me know. You can always just type um, list in the comments and I can get you on our waiting list. Um, the doors currently for the inner circle are not open. However, we will be opening again a little bit later this year. Um, so I'm keeping kind of a mailing list to make sure that I can let you know so that you got sort of first crack on getting in. And definitely some of my folks on here are already Inner Circle members and they are gonna go into town with some of the, the designs that we've already put together. And I'll be dropping this one in the next couple days. All right, so I'm just kind of doing the repeat on those blue lines. And since the foreground for this design is going to be very, very kind of simple, I'm trying to make the background more complex. And it gives me kind of that wiggle room to be able to get away with that. And take that blue down the edge down the edge. So I realize this still just looks a little bit strange. We are creating background. We are having fun. We're being, being a little crazy here. I, I should have offloaded, but I didn't. I went straight for the water. Reason I offload or went straight for the water or just rinsed it is I'm going to grab some of this yellow. I'm going to do a little bit of on 
on canvas blending into some of my mermaid tail. Or excuse me, my teal. It's not mermaid tail. I love how yellow combines with it. It makes it, it, it actually you can create some of the most amazing greens with yellow and mermaid tail. I find it to be a really versatile color. Off this one I will offload. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Thanks. And now, let's see if we can do this with hot pink. Sometimes hot pink and this stuff work really beautifully and sometimes they don't. So we'll do a quick mix on the palette first to test it. I know this one works. Let's see if this one works. Oops, just go easy. Mix, 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 mix. Look at that. You just created this beautiful, vibrant, deep purple. I think if I add a smidge more, yeah, I'll sprinkle it a little more. Okay, now if I wanted that to go even deeper, I could use a magenta instead. So now, like, who even needs, who even need to buy purple? Plus, purple's so hard to get a good one. But I want that to be pinker and brighter, so I'm going to add more hot pink to it and pop it a notch. It's a little bit uh, transparent though. I have to admit, I like I like my paint a little thicker than that. So we have just some weird color. Let me find my clinicrodon. Here it is. I actually have another bottle, but I like completely misplaced it. I'm like I can't find it. I'm sure if I look in my in my paper feed on my printer, it will be hanging out there like everything else that I leave. Because again, the printer's like right under the table. Like there's a little bit of poor design on my part. All right, we'll go with some quinacridone. I didn't rinse. I'm just going to kind of come in and amp that purple up with some quinacridone on top. I love the intensity of that stuff. And actually, when you mix it with like hot pink and sometimes with red, it really is just like, whoa. You know, if you have a thing for bright colors, quinacridone is one of those magic, magic mixers that does good stuff. So I keep putting my arm like right in the middle of the camera so you can't see. So this is kind of one of those background designs where I can get as complicated or simple as I like. I'm just going with color, right? And I feel like, you know, the edges on a lot of these are pretty rough. I'm not super concerned about that because I may just kind of tidy it up with a paint pen outlines because I do, I am going to want kind of crisp edges on those. And that's another thing. I'm always amazed at what a paint pen will do for, <laughs> can do for, for a design. A little bit of an outline. And it's not that outlining is sort of how we fix everything, but um, a, a lot of these flowers just look like blobs until, oh. On the small camera, a lot of the flowers on here look like blobs until we added sort of the details with the pen. Um, but I also really enjoy how that works. Ooh, hello. All right, some of the cerulean and the quinacridone might do good things too. Oh yeah, that was nice. Okay, well, I knew that one was my favorite, so now I have some purple. I heard of purple dots. So as you do this, you can just play with color, right? You're looking around, you're kind of like, all right, the balance, you know, how is my balance? What do I need where? Kind of purple up this guy right here. And, you know, initially when you're making art, you may not trust your intuition. But if your intuition is kind of telling you that you need to do a thing, it's okay to listen to it, especially when it comes to art. Um, and again, if you, if you mess up or you're afraid of messing up, you are never going to know how awesome your idea was unless you try it. And if it wasn't awesome, well, then you don't have to do it again. But if it was awesome, well, look, you just got to profit. Maybe profit's not the right word, but benefit from, from the awesome. So I dare say I do need some more quinacridone. 
get a little bit more on my palette. Now let's see, I have some bright red somewhere. If I remember correctly, the fire red and the quinacridone on the magenta mix rather spectacularly. Run out of palette space, but buffer. We got this. So I think we're gonna have a mostly a red base, or maybe a 50-50 mix. Let's see what happens. See what happens here. There we go. Yep. Oh, hello, gorgeous. A little bit more red. So there's I don't even know if that shows on camera, but there's an intensity to that. I've taken a warm red and dropped its dropped its temperature just a little bit so it's slightly cooler because it's grabbing some of those violet undertones but it's maintains some of the brightness and sort of orangey bits for lack of a better term from that fiery red i love mixing colors i don't ever want to overwhelm you guys with mixing colors but oh my gosh like one of my favorite games in college was just to sit there and like get a color wheel and see how close I could get to mixing the exact colors. <laughs> Nerd alert. And it's funny, once you practice that a lot, you really kind of develop a fluency um, on that. So Patricia or Pat for this, I will pr mostly use probably black and white paint pens. Uh, Cause those are the ones, and I'm thinking I'm going to go with a fat, the fat, the fat tip ones versus the fine tip ones because I think I'm going to want, you know, it's, it's a larger canvas and the little lines could get lost. And I will use not just outlining, but I'll, I'm probably thinking also about just creating some shapes with them um, and some additional kind of offshoots, various leaves, whatever, just stuff. That is kind of what this is about is stuff. Don't ever anyone accuse me of being a minimalist when it comes to painting. No, sir. We're all maximal here. Okay, so we got kind of a wild, crazy, I'm not sure what, but it is, it's just what we wanted. Mix a little bit more of this crazy red. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. Okay, offload, blow dry, of course. And so now when we do blow dry, this is important. Um, if we're using paint pens on top of something like this, you really don't want to kill your pen. Wet paint will kill a pen. I say that every time, but good Lord, every time I get someone new watching me, I don't want you to be annoyed when you kill your pen because I didn't tell you. So I want to be a broken record and remind you every time. Here we go, black do this I'm actually if I find like ridges like thick goofy bits of paint um, I'm trying to like smush it down so that so that it dries faster because if you leave ridges of paint it really makes a hot mess those ridges become like gotcha landmines. So I used a high heat, I'm just kind of testing. There's a few spots here, but yeah, isn't mixing colors fun? I mean, so, so far we have this sort of wild and crazy, very colorful thing. Um, 
at some point I'm, I may tone it down a bit with just like using like a brayer or something or a wash of gesso in certain parts if it really just is too much. But I will probably make that decision after I've placed, um, done some of more of the final stuff. Hmm, so I'm just gonna shake both, both pens, black and white. Again, I'm using my Artistro um, medium point paint marker pens. You do not have to go with Artistro, but I really do love the medium point. They just do a lot. Okay. And then, so wet and gooky. So I'm gonna stay outside of that paint a little bit. Just start to add some outlines to the circles. Maybe, come on, come on, there we go. Guess if I do one, I gotta do them all. Sticky, sticky, sticky. And then on this one, I'm gonna add a circle here and a circle here and a circle Yeah, white paint ridge. I'll tell you though, this pen is almost done anyway, so it's not the end of the world. And then here, I'm gonna literally just draw right over all this stuff, and create some lines. Oop, we need a paint pen emergency, let me fix that. So whenever you cancel, I've got like chunks of blue paint on this sucker. Not ideal, but it's okay. So now I can kind of just draw some amorphous shapes and some blobs, curls and whatnot. It sort of makes sense. It's sort of the, can you guys see that? A little bit. So it's there. It's much more obvious in person. Ooh, I'm really mucking up that pen. All right. So we'll keep going with some of our outlines here. Earth. It loves me. I swear it loves me. <laughs> the textures are so weird on this too because you get like these really like squashy soft parts of the um of the paint and it like the pen sort of stops and goes <clears throat> you know like it just won't go and then you get these really smooth parts where the pen just blows. Oh, you can see this pen is really not happy with me. So I'm breaking my own rules. Oh. And so in that case, I can just kind of stay slightly outside the outlines and that's fine too. Like it doesn't matter if my outlines are perfect. If I'm showing some of the other stuff, like say I want to go around this guy and little bits of the background actually show through, it still works. And let's see here, I think I will turn. Oh, you know, I need to get these. Oh, yes, I've always been like, oh, I could do this and I could do this and I could do this. I don't have to outline everything, but I do kind of like how it cleans it up a little bit. Gives it crispness. Almost turn some of these into specific um, objects. I think it also adds a unifying kind of pattern, especially this here, because it's almost like we're creating like a, a honeycomb or like our very own natural bubble wrap type of thing. I don't know. We're just doing the thing. And so if I were doing something, you know, more complicated in the foreground, like the Eiffel Tower or the Flamingo or something that was not going to be just a single tone anyways, a single figure, um, then I would probably go way less complicated and a lot, a little bit more muted or at least more unified. Um, again, I'm thinking I'm going to attempt to do 
something with modeling paste on this and just give it a single single color and see how that goes. But I cannot guarantee that my language will stay PG while working with the with the modeling paste this first round on this guy. So I'm not gonna film my first attempt. <laughs> It's, yeah, well, I'm not going to, uh, yeah. Certainly worked with modeling paste before, but I'm going to try something that I haven't done before. And I think I have to develop the method. And sometimes that's the thing. It's like when you're thinking about creating art, sometimes you really have to think about the method. Like if you're working in sculptural details or whatever, do you start with the stuff underneath and then layer on top? Or how does that work? All right, and this one, I think I'm just going to create some lines. So, Pat, I know I said I was going to use white paint pen. I may still, but I don't really know. This is kind of fun because we've got the sort of these rumples from where the, the paper went on unevenly or got wrinkled. All right, so we've got got sort of a wild and crazy thing and I, I love how this almost like pebbles sort of flows and then you have a little bit more order here um, and you know even this sort of serendipitous scribble line I would like to amp some of that up a little figure out how to do that here just kind of amp it up so you have this kind of yeah swirly scribbly thing and you could also do this with a paintbrush it's just that it gosh it takes so long and it requires an extraordinary level of dexterity and sometimes that extra dexterity is just enough to, to make you be like ain't nobody got time for this I know I've certainly had that that <laughs> I felt that at times like oh, I'm skipping I'm going to paint pen. I don't yeah I feel like kind of my max for doing a painting is two hours and I know when going live you guys it, two hours is a long time so that's not my intention which is also why for some of the bigger projects I pre-record them so that um, you guys can pause them you know, take a break, come back, etc. Whereas if you're going live, then it gets frustrating because you're like, wait, 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 don't leave me behind. I'm trying to keep up. All right, so we've amped up some of the black there. And so this has really kind of become this whole, yeah, isn't that crazy? Um, oh, hey, Sandy, good to see you. So this is actually just a canvas. It's a 12 or a 10 by 20 canvas. And um, I was showing everybody that we were placing some opera score so i mod podged it on the surface um, and then i created a background and so i'm working really just on a background today uh, because i i'm going to do this thing on it in modeling paste but i'm not middle school is calling i can't talk to you right now people them not you you guys are my people um, so I'm creating a background design so that I can do this other thing on top of it. But yeah, Pat, this paint pen effect is so much fun. And I tell you, once you start using them, it gets a little bit addictive. I love circles and I kind of like circles within circles. Obviously, because they keep showing up. So the one trick here is when I'm doing a circle within a circle, I try not to make it look like a target and I try not to make them all um, exactly even. I like my concentric circles to be off kilter. It's more fun that way. And then this guy will get one here. Ooh, yeah. Does this guy can have a little circle? I think these guys are going to get something else. Just some kind of lines. I don't know why. Maybe it just adds that sort of roundness look. And then maybe a couple of black dots in the middle of 
this guy. I'm not sure I want black dots on all of them. But I will add a couple of just black dots out and about. And so some of the loops and curls on this actually remind me of musical notes. So we may as well kind of add some of these circles and not quite full circles, make them slightly ovally to kind of draw upon that sense of what was there. So you can kind of have some of them overlapping. Oh, bye-bye musical notes. You were a pretty specimen, but I lost you. And it's okay. Oh, that's very even, isn't it? Let's make it slightly uneven. And so as you do these things, sometimes you can say, all right, you know, I think these black beans, whatever they are, they could be like on the top. E6000 glue, two eight by 10 canvases. Um, pattern. Oh, can I glue two? I think it's just as easy to run to Michael's and grab a six pack or five pack of 10 by 10 by 20s. Um, you know, again, they're just very simple and you can get a pretty decent um, pack of those. So my mom wanted the birdhouses, so I traced that for her and I'm going to send her like the whole thing so that she can do that for her birthday. Sure, mom. <laughs> Actually, she knows because she asked me for that. So you, you might be able to, but I think that along the glue line or the seam, um, any kind of stress on it, it might, it might split it. And if you think about the price plus the glue, it's probably a better deal to just buy these than, than the 8x10s. Um, yeah, and you don't even have to do this on canvas. I'm just doing canvas because I'm going to go modeling paste on this sucker. And I need, I need some structure, right? So modeling paste isn't going to hold up well on paper. Um, you could do it also on a board. And I will cover that when I eventually am ready to go live and talk more about that. Because I've got some cool projects in mind. i got a little, which I'm, I'm planning to get to shortly. Um, okay. I personally feel like this insanity has hit a good stopping point. Um, we can love it for what it is. It will change over time, but um, it, considering this is a background for a design, I think we, I think we just had some fun, you know, let loose, got weird. It's cool. Learned a few things and um, hopefully you, you give this a try at some point too. And again, it doesn't have to be a long canvas. You could go with something small. I do a lot of my prep stuff. On just the small eight by tens, I use canvas boards often because let me tell you, like when your entire like basement is overflowing with canvases, sometimes these little things that are like skinnier than books are really nice because you could just shove them on the shelf and break them out when you need them. Um, or that's why I also do a lot of work in my in my sketchbooks because you know I can have like twenty of my best pieces of art you know crammed in here and I can carry the whole thing with me. So I'll tell you, if the house were, were burning down, if I could grab one piece of art, I would grab this one thing and sadly I'd let the rest of it go. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm off on a tangent. Here I go. But anyways, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you like this and know somebody you think would enjoy this or just want all your friends to see it, there's the little button that uh, you can hit that will uh, help us out. And I'm on Instagram as well. And so, yeah, all those things. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one. I love you guys and I appreciate you. Ciao, Betlas.